Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris, man. And as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. I got a question. It's a really good question from one of my subscribers, Mike. And my question read this. How you doing, Morris, man? I've been playing guitar for a while and at least 20 years. And I've been having problems with taking the chords apart. I'm trying to pick portions of the chords so I'm not playing too much or playing with what playing what my keyboard player is doing so do you have any instructional dvds that will help me with that thanks again that's a real good question because uh i'm going to address this and uh i think a lot of people don't know what they don't know the problem is not that you're playing too much as far as what the keyboard player is doing the problem is you need to play something else i mean unless you are uh have a keyboard player and you want to play what he's playing, which kind of adds to the fatness, somebody got to do something else. And I think a lot of people don't realize it's the arrangement, you know, because i give you a good example. I was in a band before, and the bass player, who was the leader, he brought in another guitar player. And we already had a playlist, and the guitar player that came in was playing exactly what I was playing. So I had to I'd make an adjustment. I said, this would be interesting. You know, instead of uh, we both playing uh, C major 7 in the same version, I'm going to play a C major 7 under him or over him. So it add an octave or kind of a voicing, you know, instead of two guys playing the same thing. So it's not about picking apart the chords. It's about arrangement. I mean, if your keyboard player is kind of the, the heavy chord uh, player in the band because you know like say for instance Sheik now Rogers was the chord guy you know and then the piano kind of made play some accomplishments to or uh, accomplish him or should I say uh, you know play something different but uh, you first have to determine who who is the, the chord guy who's holding down the meat and then you work around that because uh, in a lot of my bands I was the chord guy and the keyboard playing was kind of playing kind of like what now Rogers piano player was doing. So that first has to be established, you know. And a lot of people have no idea that it's about the arrangement. Because, again, if the keyboard player, say, for instance, like Frankie Beverly and Mays, the keyboard playing was kind of holding down the fatness in the chords and the guitar player was picking and, and doing feels. So uh, you have to decide what your role is because, again, it's okay if you want to play the same thing with the keyboard player, vice versa. Long as the inversions are slightly different, add a different dimension, as opposed to, again, two guys doing the same thing. You know, so uh, I think a lot of people don't realize that uh, arrangement is so underrated. Song structure is so underrated because everybody hollering about the key structure, nonsense, what key you're in, and, you know, chord progressions. Throw that crap out the window because it's old teaching, you know, and, um, uh, they teach in a certain way or used to, and they got used to it, and that's what they just keep doing. But, you know, like with my channel, it speaks for itself. I got over 4,000 videos collectively on both channels. Actually, I got three channels. And none of them I use all plat theory as far as, well, I'm in the key of B minor and B minor have these keys. No, I learned the chords and I just played them. Make it real simple. Now, if you're trying to get into you know, scores and movie scores and stuff like that. Yeah, you might need to know that. But most of us are just guys playing in the club or playing professionally. You know, we're not major uh, music or movie writer scores like a John Williams. You know, so uh, a lot of people, you know, follow that old tradition. And I'm not knocking the old tradition. I'm just saying it's just much easier and simpler just to learn the chords and play them. You know, that, that's simple. Unless you're trying to do some solo jazz stuff, yeah, you need to know about what key you're in and what chords you can play within that key structure and you'll never be out of key. But uh, arrangement is a lot. You know, a good example of of that is uh, just my imagination. It's only three chords in that entire song. But if you listen to the classical or the, or the string arrangements, you listen to how everything is arranged, how the guitar is arranged versus the piano. They're not doing the same thing. The guitar player has a specific thing he's doing. Uh, the keyboards player has a specific thing he's doing. One of my favorite songs is by Kim, Love Calls. Uh, I love what the guitar player did. And basically, he just did feels the entire song, and it sounded good. Same thing with uh, Was Not Was. That whole album, the guitar work is just incredible. You know, so uh, the answer to that question is there's nothing wrong with the chords. It's just the arrangement. You have to decide as far as 
you know, who has what role in the band and, and what do you do where you're not clashing with another musician in the band, you know, and uh, that comes just like with your rhythm. It comes naturally at some point in time. The more you do it, the better you become because I was lucky. You know, I came from an era where everybody was trying to be like Prince. I'm going to write. I'm going to play. I'm going to engineer. And all of that stuff became beneficial in my career down the road. You know, because by the time I started playing professional bands, I was already kind of a certified engineer, producer, writer. You know, and a lot of the guys in the band didn't realize that I could do all that stuff until some of they, they heard some of my stuff on other bands throughout the city. You know, because one of the bass, the bass player came back and said, man, I, uh, I checked out that uh, local band down the street on uh, Saturday and they, 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 they snuck in some nice originals and, uh, and uh, I asked them about it and they told me that you wrote it. I said, yeah, I wrote that about a year ago and they were into original stuff where our band just wanted to do covers. So I didn't try to force the fact that I wrote songs on the band I was in because they just wanted to do covers and I was fine with that. But that will come. The more you play, the more you study records, you start to develop that because one of my favorite uh, bands from England was uh, Freddie and the Dreamers. And I listened to the guitar work where they had two guitar players and they were playing different things. You know, and so one was on this ear, this was another one was on this ear, and they didn't conf uh, conflict with each other or clash. So that will come in time as far as when you start to play and listen to stuff, you say, well, you know what, I'm going to do this because this is going to complement what the keyboard player is doing as opposed to we doing the same thing and playing the same inversion. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you, Mike, and helpful to other people that have been struggling with that issue because, again, I can sit down and listen to a track and kind of add original guitar riff to it. You know, and sometimes when I do covers, I kind of do that. But for the most part, I try to stick to the latter. But that comes in time. You know, uh, over the years, I just develop a good ear for arrangements as far as this should be here, this should be here. And I'll give you another quick example before I sign off. One of my first professional production jobs as far as artists, working with artists and producing their song was uh, a group that a, a dear good friend of mine, we grew up together, he got into management, so he brought these this duo over. He said, they got a nice track, man, and could you help us put it together? So I listened to it, because it was just a skeleton track where the the the, 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 uh, one of the, the guy in, in the group was just playing, because he played great piano play, just playing chords and singing, and she was singing. So uh, I said the first thing I wanted to do, because I think it was a multi-track uh, demo, that they brought it to me and they had her singing lead, singing in harmonies in the background with him. I said, the first thing I want to do is take her out of that background and put him in and have him do a, a dub of himself. So it's two of him in the background and none of her. It's like, why you want to do that? Because people are a little apprehensive when you start working with their baby, you know, the music. I said, here's the reason why. When you sing it live, she ain't gonna be in the background. And then, it's a good idea to take her out of the background because we want the focus to be on her up front with the mic in her face as opposed to she doing background. So we want, if we, if we, at some point in time when you do a live, which they did, uh, you want to have two people in the background where she's singing lead because we want the focus to be on her up front as opposed to we hear her singing lead and we hear her in the background. I want to eliminate that. And once we finish the track, they say, you know what? You were right. That worked better than her singing. You know, harmonies with, her her cousin i said no i want him to be singing harmonies with himself in the studio and of course when they do a live someone else within the band or background singer will do that other part so again uh the more you do it the better you become and your ear just starts to develop as far as different sounds and arrangements and will this fit here this doesn't work let's try this so until next time take care thanks for watching